Hello, and welcome to Oathbreaking News, your Oathbreaker news source brought to you by the Signature Spellbomb. In this episode, we will be covering more of the Core 2021 and Jumpstart set spoiler season so far. This is part three of our spoiler series for Core 2021. And as of June 16th, 2020, all cards have been spoiled for the core set. The Jumpstart spoilers will start tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this video. If you want to check out my earlier videos in this series, I have put together a playlist, link in the description. There will also be additional links in the description so that you can view all the cards that have been revealed as well as the spoiler announcement article. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do here on the channel, then please help us out by like, sharing, and subscribing. Let's continue to look at the recently spoiled cards and how they are likely to affect the Oathbreaker format. Since we are trying to keep these videos brief, I will not be covering additional art or additional printings of the cards, and I will try to keep the overall coverage brief and to the point. On Tuesday, June 9th, they spoiled the following cards. Treacherous Greed costs 3 and a red. It is a sorcery, and you gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste till end of turn, and you get to add 2 mana of any one color to your mana pool. These types of threaten effects are usually incredibly useful, and in a pinch can even be used to untap your own creatures. Warden of the Woods costs 4 and 2 green. It's a 5-7 tree folk with Vigilance. Whenever Warden of the Woods becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw two cards. This type of card advantage simply for having a big blocker in play is the type of thing we like to have in our stompy green decks. Garruk's Uprising for two and a green is an enchantment. When Garruk's Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power four or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have trample. That's a scary sentence. Whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. I honestly would probably run this card in a Koira Behemoth Beckner deck since she already rewards us for playing creatures with power 4 or greater. Meteorite costs 5 colorless mana, it's an artifact, and when it enters the battlefield we deal 2 damage to any target. We can tap it to add 1 mana of any color to our color pool. This mana rock is frankly way too expensive for both of its benefits. I don't think it'll get a lot of play. Alpine Houndmaster, for a red and a white, is a 2-2 human warrior. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card named Alpine Watchdog and or a card named Ingenious Cur. You reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. When Alpine Houndmaster attacks, it gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the number of other attacking creatures. This is another one of those cards in our dog strategy type of cards we're getting out of Core 2021. His two faithful dogs you can look for in the deck is what I will cover next. Alpine Watchdog costs one in white. It's a 2-2 white creature with vigilance. Ignis Kerr costs one in a red, is a 1-2 creature, and has... Pay one in a red, it will get plus two plus O till end of turn. Grasp of Darkness costs two black, and target creature gets minus four minus four until end of turn. This is a good simple removal spell that doesn't care if a creature's indestructible or not. It does only take care of small threats, however. Obsessive Stitcher costs one a blue and a black, is a zero three human wizard. We can tap her to draw a card and discard a card. Pay two, a blue and a black. We can tap and sacrifice her to return to our creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. These types of cards are great for most Demir decks, so I have a feeling we'll see her run, especially with her affordable mana cost. Fable Passage can be tapped. We sacrifice it, search our library for basic land, and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Then we shuffle our library. If we control four or more lands, we then get to untap a land. I have heard... Wizards and a lot of other channels complain that we're not getting fetch lands in standard and they don't want to reprint them into standard. And then they reprint Fable Passage, which was first printed in Throne of the Eldraine not long ago. So I'll leave that information to you, but I feel like that is conflicting. Heroic Invention costs one in a green. 
It's an instant permanent you control, gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. This is an amazing card for protecting your entire team from a board wipe. It can make a decent signature spell, and personally I like to see it reprinted because I have not been able to afford it in any of my budget decks so far. I'm not going to go through all of them, but we are getting reprints of all of the enemy colored temples. So we will be getting Temple of Epiphany, Temple of Melody, Temper, Temple of Mastery, Temple of Silence, and Temple of Triumph. All of these temples enter play tapped. They tap for their enemy colors, and they allow you to scry the top card of your library when they come into play. And next, we have Idol of Endurance for two and a white. When it enters the battlefield, we exile all creature cards with converted mana cost three or less from our graveyard until Idol of Endurance leaves the battlefield. We can pay one in a white and tap it until end of turn we may cast creature spells from among the cards exiled with Idol of Endurance without paying that card's mana cost. This is a really good setup card for any deck that wants multiple enter the battlefield triggers. There are a lot of good creatures with mana cost 3 or less that we could use to abuse this card. Volcanic Savo costs 10 in 2 red. This spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of the creatures you control. Volcanic Salvo deals 6 damage to each of up to 2 target creatures and or planeswalkers. This is a really good card in my opinion for Oathbreaker. It is an odd card that I might actually use as a signature spell. Anytime you can reduce the cost of your signature spell, including the tax, that is a good effect to have on a card. I do wish it started out at less than 12 mana, but what can you do? Pack Leader for one and a white is a 2-2 two -two dog that says other dogs you control get plus one plus one. Uh, whenever Pack Leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Aren't they just some good boys? Invigorating Surge for two and a green is an instant that lets you put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control, and then you double the number of 1-1 counters on that creature. This is very similar to Hydra's Growth, but instead of being an enchantment, it's an instant, which makes it ideal for an Oathbreaker signature spell. Dire Fleet Warmonger costs 1, a black, and a red. It's an orc pirate that is a 3-3. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, Dire Fleet Warmonger gets plus 2, plus 2, and gains trample till end of turn. This card, again, could be good in a Aristocrats-style deck in black-red, but personally, I'm not a huge fan. Next, we have Soul Seer. It costs 2 and a red. It deals 5 damage to target creature and or planeswalker at instant speed, and that permanent will lose indestructible. This is a good way to get around some problematic cards, and it does have a little bit of advantage of being more damage than what we're investing in mana. Stormwing Entity costs 3 and 2 blue. It's a 3-3 elemental creature that costs 2 and a blue less to cast if we've cast an instant or sorcery spell before it this turn. It has Flying and Prowess which makes an excellent spell slinger candidate, and when it enters the battlefield we can scry two, setting our next two cards maybe to get us some instant and sorcery spells to trigger that prowess. Our final card, spoiled on June 9th, was Joriel Moon Volley Recluse. She costs one and a green, and she's a 1-2 human druid creature. Whenever we draw our second card each turn, we create a 2-2 green cat creature token. If we pay 4 and a green, until end of turn, creatures we control have base power and toughness equal to XX, where X is the number of cards in our hand. Again, this is a great card for any sort of green-blue Simic draw deck, and I can see it working very well with the cat sub-theme we have in M2021. On Wednesday, June 10th, we had the following cards spoiled. Garuk's Harbringer costs 1 and 2 green. It's a 4-3 creature with Hexproof from black. When Garuk's Harbringer deals combat damage to a player or planeswalker, you look at that many cards from the top of your library. You may reveal a creature card or a Garuk planeswalker card from among them and put them into your hand and put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. For 3 mana, this is an excellent focus to draw spell that can help us get exactly what we need in the right situation. Vryn Wingmare, for two and a white, is a flying Pegasus with power and toughness of 2-1. It reads, non-creature spells cost one more to cast. 
This is kind of in line with white hoser cards we've seen in the past, and at low cost, this can certainly swing a game in your favor since you'll probably be building a deck full of these taxing type effects. Garuk Unleashed cost two and two green. He's a four loyalty planeswalker. If we plus one him, up to one target creature gets plus three plus three and gains trample till end of turn. If we minus two him, we create a three three green beast creature token. Then if an opponent controls more creatures than us, we put an additional loyalty counter on Garuk Unleashed. And minus seven, we get an emblem that reads, at the beginning of your end step, you may search your library for a creature card and put it directly onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. That is an incredibly useful Garuk Planeswalker, and it's nice to have him back in solid green colors. I can't wait to build a deck around this particular Oathbreaker. Valorous Steed, for four and a white, is a 3-3 Vigilance Unicorn. When it enters the battlefield, we create a 2-2 white knight creature token with Vigilance. I honestly think for this cost, it's not very good. Furious Rise costs 2 and a red at the beginning of your end step. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card until you exile another card with Furious Rise. This is the type of impulsive draw that red gets at a cost of three. It's great, and because it is a recurrable draw that happens every turn, we'll take it over a lot of our instant and sorcery choices in our Oathbreaker decks. So you'll probably be seeing me building with it more. Garuk's Greenhorn is a four and a green cost, seven three beast creature. That's all there is to say about that. Hellkite Punisher is a 6-6 six, six dragon with flying and fire breathing for 5 and 2 red mana. That is a decent dragon. I imagine it will make appearance in Dragonstorm style decks. Hellfire Immolation for 1 and a red is a 2-2 two, two prowess creature that has pay red mana, sacrifice Hellfire Immolator. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker. It looks like we're getting a lot more effects in this set that will allow us to target our opponent's Oathbreakers directly. And at one in a red, this is not terrible, and with Prowess, the damage it can deal can get high. Goblin Arsonist for one red is a 1-1 one, one Goblin. It's a reprint. Whenever it dies, you may have it deal one damage to any target. Uh, this actually combos with another card we'll ta be talking about in a moment. Fiery Emancipation for 3 and 3 red is an enchantment that reads if a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or a player, it deals triple that damage instead to that permanent or a player instead. That is a terrifying card that feels like it's a must run in almost every red deck I can think about. I've seen Mitch on his channel, uh, which is the Commander's Quarters, mention that this could be a must run staple for red as well, and I totally agree with him. Frantic Inventory for 1 in a blue is an instant that reads, draw a card, then draw cards equal to the number of cards name, Fanatic Inventory in your graveyard. This card is not very useful in Oathbreaker. Leafkin Avenger costs 2, a red, and a green mana. He is an elemental druid, 4-3. Uh, if we tap him, we can add green mana for each creature we control with power 4 or greater, and if we pay 7 in a red, he'll deal damage equal to his power to target player or planeswalker. That could be a game-ending ability in some games, and it also is another card that lets us target our opponent's Oathbreakers. Lofty Denial for one and a blue lets us counter-target spell unless its controller pays one colorless mana. If we control a creature with flying, counter that spell unless a controller pays four instead. For a two-cost counter spell, that's decent. Conspicuous Snoop costs two red mana. He's a 2-2 Goblin Rogue. We play with the top card of our library revealed. We may cast Goblin Spells from the top card of our library. And as long as the top card of our library is a Goblin card, Conspicuous Snoop has all activated abilities of that card. Many people immediately noticed that this combos with Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker in order to go infinite. And if you include our little goblin from earlier in the video, you can then have all those goblins die at the end of the turn to Kiki Jiki's trigger, doing an infinite amount of damage to all of your opponents. If you want to understand a little bit more about how that combo works, it is very similar to the one that was in our Splinter Twins deck. Here's a link in the corner. Earl Fist Oak costs two and two green. It's a two three tree folk. Whenever we draw a card, it gets plus two plus two till end of turn. In the right deck, that could be terrifying. 
he will not trigger so much on his own. So figuring out how we're going to get that draw is probably going to put us in Simic colors most of the time. Drowsing Pteranodon costs one and a green, and it's a 3-3 dinosaur with Defender. As long as we control a creature with power greater than four, it can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Riddle Form costs one and a blue. Whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we may have this enchantment become a 3-3 Sphinx with flying in addition to its other types until end of turn. If we play two and a blue, we can scry the top card of our library. Riddle Form works great in Spell Slinger decks, as it still counts as a non-creature spell, but is also a creature. It also would be really good in Polymorph decks, because it allows us to include a creature in the deck, but it won't keep Polymorph from finding the exact bomb creature we're looking for. Light of Promise costs two and a white. It enchants a creature and has whenever you gain life, you put that many woman counters on enchanted creature. In white, this is an amazing enchantment. I would like to see it in a lot of decks that are running uh, lifelink style strategies or just general life gain. Well, that's the last card I'm going to cover in this video. We will be returning with additional spoiler season videos, so be on the lookout. I would like to take a moment here to talk about my LGS. This is not a paid promotion. I just want to support my friends at Mythic Games Colorado. Mythic Games is a gaming store for all ages located in Littleton. They have a pleasant, attentive, amazing staff that always helps me with any request I've had. They stock hundreds of games and are willing to ship them directly to you. And they have always provided me with expert help with my deck lists and any questions I have about games I may wish to purchase. I have worked with them in the past to set up my orders via Facebook Messenger and Twitter, and they've always filled them and let me know when there's a problem. I will put all of their information in the description if you're interested in shopping from my local LGS. Now that we have provided you with the news and our opinion, give us your thoughts in the comments below. What products this year are you most excited about, and is there a particular card in this set of spoilers you must have in one of your decks? Uh, also, this episode is a slightly different format, so let me know what you think. If you enjoy the videos and you want to support the channel, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to see our updated oath-breaking news videos. We do have merchandise. If you want to show your support, please see the link in the description. Be sure to check out our new Run With The Booster Pack merchandise. If you want to support the channel directly, consider giving at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb or paypal.me slash signature spell bomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I hope I don't see you in the headlines.